Someone recently asked me what my favorite mod on the Bronco was, and I told them those lights, those RTR roof lights. But I've also wanted a roof rack for a long time, specifically the Tremor Rack by Trail Racks. The problem is that they use the same mounting points. So it's a decision whether to keep the roof lights or put on a roof rack. But I thought, why not have the best of both worlds and try to modify the Trail Racks roof rack to accommodate these Project X spotlights. I think I'm gonna regret this, but welcome to the never ending weekend. So I got it in, that stupid headrest doesn't come off. I couldn't flip up the seat base because then it wouldn't give enough room for this to lean back. But anyways, got it in. That's the maximum capacity for a two door Bronco, FYI. So let's see what's in this first box, the smaller of the two boxes. Oh, these are the side mounts. Oh, so this must be all for the pack racks, the side pack racks, nicely packaged. So this is one eighth inch 5051 aluminum. Should be easy enough to drill into. I'm just worried about accuracy. So this is the windshield to the rack and I'm going to try and replace that with this piece and see how that works. This is the part that I'm going to have to modify. So the main rails. And I'm going to replace those lights on this wind deflector from the trail racks, the tremor rack. First thing first is to move the RTR light bar and the uh, Project Series 1 lights. This is just a comparison of the RTR roof light bar. Look at the, all the internal bracing and how thick. I'm going to assume this is steel. Whereas in this wind deflector from the tremor rack is aluminum and much thinner. It actually flexes under weight. Kind of makes me worried that I'm barking up the wrong tree here. But I think I'm past the point of no return. So let's see how it goes. The Bronco looks a little naked without the lights. Sad day. I just want to show you all the rust that's already formed. It's only been half a year. I guess you get that with the extra rigidity of steel. You get this problem with rust. And I've kind of mentioned before that the uh, powder coating on this RTR stuff is not the best. So these are aluminum, relatively soft. This is just from the driveway, so be careful. How come all this rugged off-road stuff is so fragile? It's not super accurately cut. I'm just gonna peel back part of it and then start with that leading edge. That's not bad. That don't seem to fit. Why would they? Why make it easy, right? Even though it says to put the carriage bolts into the slots first, I don't think I'll be able to get them on the brackets then. Because they're a super tight fit. Like they don't just slip in and out. There we go. Make sure the arrows are pointing opposite directions per instructions. So now we center it and it says 1.9 instruction says 1.92 inches on either side, which is a pretty accurate. And that looks perfect, actually. 1.92 inches, actually. Let's move over 1 16th, or half a 16th, 1 32nd. Eesh. Okay, that's centered to the closest 32nd of an inch. That's pretty accurate or at least accurate enough. And I just realized why they're so, in the instruction manual, they want you to be very careful about the torque measurements 
because everything's aluminum. You know, the more I get into this, the more I think this is not going to work, and I'm just going to have to use the uh, light bar that comes with this rack. Though I like that light bar, it's nice and clean. I always wanted the big round ones, you know, like the ones that I would see on the big trucks, built up trucks when I was a kid. The big Casey highlight ones with the, the smiley face cover. So like I was saying before, this flimsy piece of aluminum compared to this beefy steel rear reinforced light bar, I don't know if it's gonna be able to handle the weight and movement of the lights. Plus, where would I put the center one? I mean, even if I drilled new holes for the other ones, I have to figure something out for here. I'm just gonna put on the protective stripping now on the wind deflector to help it protect scratching from the factory paint. There are two sides of the stripping. The rubber obviously goes to the, towards the car. Mark the center of the wind deflector and also mark the center of the rubber and start from the middle and go outward. Looks pretty even. Make sure it's seated properly. It's a one-time thing. This is kind of a nice touch. These are cut logos. Small bit towards the top on the inside, just like that. Bolt through the outside, nut on the inside. Pretty tight. It's a bit tricky. Now a bit of disassembly. Project X said they were gonna come out with some amber lenses last year, but still, I haven't still seen anything yet from them. I really like the fact that these RTR light bar has the lights down pretty low. That's where the RTR light bar will put it. And this is the bottom of the light because it hinges at the bottom. I need to repurpose these attachment points on the trail racks because it shares the center line with the middle light. So I'm either going to put it very low and the bottom of the bracket might touch the sheet metal, but then I have no place behind it to attach the bolt. It will attach, it will actually touch the sheet metal. So it will have to use this upper bolt and this is the lowest I can go. Share the upper bolt of the trail racks and then drill a new hole. And I've decided to keep them the same spacing as the RTR light bar because it looks kind of funny way out here. So those are the decisions. So essentially the light has kind of moved up maybe five inches higher. But I think that's the only way we can do it. Whether it'll look good or not, I don't know. We'll have to try it out and see. Nuts move up and down. I might have to install everything just so that I get exact positioning of that bolt because I'm going to reuse that top one so I know where to drill that second hole for the light bracket. Taking the factory tools and uninstalling the hard top now. There it is. I'm going to raise this high enough that I can work underneath it. How do I do that without needing another person? Oh, do it this way. I'll show you a little bit of where there's a will, there's a way. Two by six under the crossbar, two by six is under the front corners, but because the glass is heavy on the back, it wants to tip up, so I just add a little extra weight on the front, and it seems <laughs> relatively stable. Okay, let's get the trail racks side rails on now. These are a bit filthy. It's kind of surprising considering the hard top is on. So I'll just clean it up a bit. So these are the fender bolts, I guess, to take off this whole panel if you're going to replace it. I've never taken these off. Make sure these are fully seated because of the paint you might end up stripping it if it's not all the way into your socket. So in the instructions, they give you a little bit of foam tape to put along this groove 
so it doesn't touch the Bronco's sheet metal. But I have this leftover from the soft top, which is in the exact same spot. So it looks like it does the same job. So there's no point in putting another layer of foam there. So I'll just keep it like that. So the pack rat rails have a D for driver and a P for passenger. So you know which side you're using. The video instructions from Trail Racks suggest you put a washer on the bottom before using the factory bolts on top. But the printed instructions say nothing. The PDF says nothing about the bottom washers. But I went through the hardware bag again and made sure that I had the parts and I do. So might as well use them. I don't know why there's an inconsistency in their instructions. The instructions continue to emphasize don't over tighten which is a great reminder for someone like me who's notorious for shearing heads off of bolts. Kind of cool. Okay, I laid down all the bolts and now it's just a matter of assembling everything together. Done. That was easy. Just go, go try to get around the Bronco. So I think the best course of action here is to ratchet everything down in place and even though that means disconnecting everything afterwards or taking everything apart again, I think that's the best way to make sure that the wind, the wind deflector is exactly in the position it needs to be with all this uh, locked down and then I can be accurate with the holes that I'm drilling for the lights. Seriously, I don't know how Trail Racks expects you to be able to properly properly torque them these things down okay i've bolted everything down and you can see here a little bit of, of the powder coat coming off the aluminum so be careful it flakes off pretty easily and i've marked where that bolt is so that i can accurately measure where the other hole needs to be yeah so let's start drilling so i'm about to measure out and drill all the holes the crossbar the aluminum crossbar behind the wind deflector Gives me enough confidence to think that this is going to hold the weight of the five lights. So using the top side as the straight edge, I don't know if you can see those pencil marks, but I measured out the spacing for the lights the same way it's on the RTR light bar. Eight and a half inches between each one. I'm going to start with a small pilot hole and then the hole size is 1130 seconds, uh, the hole size for these bolts. Okay, finished drilling, feeling really good about myself. Holes turned out pretty nice. But then realize while lining this up, each bottom hole, I guess I should have realized this before, needs to attach itself to the rail behind it. Now the wind deflector holds onto the back through these T-nuts that slide in, in that space. I'm wondering if this is strong enough to hold that light in place. I'll have a bolt up top, the right bolt, but now I cut this too big. Oh, what a pain in the butt. Anyway, I gotta think about this. Dang, none of these will work. Okay, back from the hardware store, these T-Sops for the bigger bolts for the lights don't fit in here. They're too big. I got these small nuts uh, that also don't fit in, but they're close. So I'm going to try to grind them down. Oh boy. So I finished grinding down the nuts. And am I worried that this original robust nut and bolt is being replaced by these compromised nuts? Am I a little bit worried about that? Yeah, a little bit. Am I still going to do it? Yeah, and probably a good time now to make a disclaimer. Don't listen to me because I don't know what I'm doing. I think it'll hold. Now disassembling the RTR light bar to get the brackets. Ah. And if anyone's thinking to make fun of my Ryobi tools, they have a great ecosystem of attachments that run off of one battery and they're just awesome. So back off. It 
There you go, another automotive part that I can store and never use again. Let it rust until 20 years later I throw out. About to put everything back together again, but notice these marks, which I've tried cleaning. It's just the eraser taking off the pencil. I thought using a pencil would be nice and safe, but the eraser left marks I can't get rid of. Interesting. I wouldn't want to show you what's underneath all that because there's a few missed drills and stuff. Hopefully the rack doesn't collapse because I corrupted the integrity somehow. But uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, those silver bolts is because I couldn't get button heads that were stainless steel. So I'm just going to use some paint to make them black and disappear. And then add the lights on and finish the rack up. Everything looking so great but I just realized I have no spot for this wiring harness to loop to the back. I gotta drill another hole or something. Anyway. So here's the next step of the never ending saga. So again, I didn't consider the wiring harness and where I was gonna wrap that. I've thought about looping it over, but that would look not that nice. I've decided to drill holes, but I wanna try to keep them as small as possible so there's not these big gaping holes. The only reason I make big ones is to fit this big plug end in. So instead I'm gonna extend all the wires so it's just the wire going through. I found these grommets at my local Home Depot that I'll use at the bottom of these, each of these holes and then loop the wire behind underneath this cross member that's very close to the uh, sheet metal of the car but I'll have enough room for wires. Bring it back here and then these mounting bases, not use the sticky, but slide them in and then twist tie all the cables to this. So a few more holes to drill and then we'll see how that looks. Wish me luck. Holes are cut, but the grommets was a good idea, but they're gonna have to go into the shelf of never to be used again, odds and ends. Cause this is really meant for really thin metal and this is at least an eighth of an inch, so it won't work. I'll just paint these black the rough edges and then um, we'll just take it from there. I don't think there's going to be a rubbing issue. I got one of these valve markers, paint markers. I'm just going to go through uh, all the like bolts that are silver and the little the rough areas. Okay, as you can see, you see the holes that I made, the painful cut, and see if it'll reach. If not, I'll extend it. If they're okay, I'll just butt end them together with some heat shrink. It's putting everything back together, so hopefully I'll go smoothly. Probably won't, but hopefully. Okay, finally got all the lights on here. It took me way longer than I thought it was going to and I messed up a few times with the heat gun. Now, I just want to place it on the Bronco and just test it to make sure it works before ratcheting down the whole roof rack. Okay, here's a test. So during the test, I noticed some flickering of the lights, which suggests that possibly one of the connections is bad. I kind of overdo it sometimes with the connection, trying to make it really secure, but ruin the crimp by doing that. I did find one loose wire, and I just discovered these things, which I'll be using going forward. It's a butt connector that has a little bit of solder in the middle. You put the wires in loosely into the sleeve and then heat the whole thing. It makes it waterproof the solder melts into the wires and it's supposed to be a really easy, really good, secure connection. I'm kind of contemplating whether to redo them all, but um, for now, I'll just redo this one loose one and take it from there. I'd hate for it to have an electrical issue and me having to take it all off again, but redoing all of them kind of is just as undesirable. So you keep the wires loose, you don't wrap them. Slide it in, make sure it reaches that solder point and then you just stick the other end in. You want to make sure that the cable jacket passes that red point. There we go. Obviously, I would never say out loud 
or suggest to use paper as a deflector. You can see how it, the red line melted pretty well here. Not so much here, but still, I think it's good. Pretty solid. And you can see that the solder is melted as well in the middle. Once I plug it in, I'll make sure that uh, there's no real big problems and then I'll tape it up. I have some wire loom that I'm going to cover this all and clip it with these clips and clean it all up. So let's put it on the truck. Well, I've, I've been able to tilt them. Oh, you can tilt them. Now. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Move forward. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. Okay. Okay, now we put the end brackets on. Notice the arrows all point forward. Here's another arrow here. The bigger bracket sits on the outside, inner, uh, the smaller bracket sits on the inside. Ugh. Trying not to over tighten. It's very hard for me. It goes against my nature. So not that straightforward modifying the roof rack to accommodate the lights uh, but I think if you have your act together and you have all the right pieces in place before you start hopefully you could use what I did as kind of a guide so you know what to expect so if you're doing the project X lights or any round light for that matter KC lights or whatever that's that the roof rack looks pretty good looks sturdy glad I have somewhere to grab onto when I climb up on the Bronco so yeah so a few more bits left to build on the Bronco. Until then, have a great weekend, everyone.